The Sea Dragon was a 1962 conceptualised design study for a two-stage sea-launched orbital super heavy launch vehicle. The project was led by Robert Trox while working at Aerojet, one of the number of designs he created that were to be launched by floating ro rockets from the ocean. Although there was some interest at both NASA and the Todd shipyards, the project was not implemented. Welcome to Unhinged Space. Here comes episode 15, The Sea Dragon. I'm your host, Timothy Albies. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell notifications. Let's get into it. With dimensions of 150 meters long and 23 meters in diameter, Sea Dragon would have been the largest rocket ever built. As of 2021, among rockets that have been fully conceived but not built, it is by far the largest ever and in terms of payload to low Earth orbit, LEO, rivaled only by the Starship concept currently being developed by SpaceX. Trial's basic idea was to produce a low-cost heavy launcher, a concept called Big Dumb Booster. To lower the cost of operation, the rocket itself was launched from the ocean, requiring little in the way of support systems. A large ballast tank system attached to the bottom of the first stage engine bell was used to hoist the rocket vertical for launch. In this orientation, the payload at the top of the second stage was just above the waterline, making it easy to access. Trail had already experimented with the basic system in the CB and Seahorse concepts. To lower the cost of the rocket, he intended it to be built of inexpensive materials, specifically 8mm steel sheeting. The rocket would be built by a seaside shipbuilder and towed to sea for launch. It would use wide engineering margins with strong simple materials to further enhance reliability and reduce cost and complexity. The first stage was to be powered by a single 350 mega newton thrust engine burning RP1 and liquid oxygen. The tank pressure was 470 psi for the RP1 and 250 psi for the liquid oxygen providing a chamber pressure of 290 psi at liftoff. As the vehicle climbed, the pressures would drop off, eventually burning out after 81 seconds. By this point, the vehicle would be 40 kilometers up and 32 kilometers downrange, traveling at a speed of 6,400 kilometers per hour. The normal mission profile expended the stage in high speed splashdown, some 290 kilometers downrange. Plans for stage recovery were studied as well. The second stage was also equipped with a single very large engine, in this case a 59 mega newton thrust engine burning liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. It was also pressure fed at a constant lower pressure of 100 psi throughout the entire 260 second burn, at which point it would be 229 kilometers up and 940 kilometers downrange. A typical launch sequence would start with the rocket being refurbished and mated to its cargo and ballast tanks on shore. The RP-1 would also be loaded at this point. The rocket would then be towed to a launch site where the liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen would be generated on site using electrolysis. Use of a nuclear powered aircraft carrier as a power supply was also suggested. The rocket would have been able to carry a payload of up to 550 tonnes into LEO, or low Earth orbit. Payload costs would be approximately 500 to 5060 per kilogram inflation adjusted for 2021. However, budget pressures led to the closing of the Futures Projects branch, ending work on the super heavy launches they had proposed for a crewed mission to Mars. A quick shout out to my fellow content creator in the space niche, Jordan aka The Angry Astronaut. He recently got some airtime on a major Australian news program. You are becoming very popular around the world my friend, and congratulations on exceeding 63,000 subscribers on your YouTube channel. Everybody, his link will be in the description. Please go follow him and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate the views, likes and shares, but especially the comments. I'm happy to answer any of your questions in the section below. Stay safe and Godspeed from Unhinged Space.